Hello and welcome to Walker Tea Review. I'm Jason Walker. Welcome to a new year of tea tasting. Starting off here with a Japanese green. Um, I'm going to be doing Japanese greens uh, with a more authentic approach towards Japanese greens. Here's a, a, a Kyusu teapot that I'm going to be using. Scooping out a little bit of... Uh, I'm going to scoop out enough to fill the bottom flat surface. That's about a inch and a half, two inch diameter there at the bottom. Uh, that's bare, almost does it. Just a sprinkle more. That looks good. Uh, water's been brought to a boil, and, or an early boil, started to rumble, hasn't really come to a full rolling boil. And so this will be hotter than what uh, most uh, tea steep in Japanese green tea sencha type instructions will tell you. But that's okay because this will pull out intensities, it will pull out both the strengths and some of the flaws of the tea. So it, it, it kind of gives it a more, it gives us a, a fuller, uh, more uh, in-depth approach or a look at this particular tea. I'm going to let that steep briefly, not as, uh, not as long because of the intensity there the, that's going to be going on in the steeping and the temperature in not too long on time. Now let me talk about this tea as I do so, and I may have to kind of stop and, and get back to the, the pouring here for just a moment. But this is from Te Teas of Japan. Uh, you can find them online. Uh, Sencha from the Tawa, Tawa, I had this for a few minutes ago, Tawa, Tawa Ramine. Uh, that's, that's the area. Okay, it is the varietal, the Shizu 7132. Uh, you can get uh, 50 grams for $23.39 currently. So this is from the Tawaramine area. That is from the Aoi borough of Shizuoka City in Shizuoka Prefecture of Japan, of course. Uh, this is a Honyama tea, which is a, a mountain tea along in the, within the Shizuoka Prefecture there. Uh, you can find out about this, this particular cultivar. This is a, a somewhat unique cultivar. This hasn't necessarily been re registered, recognized as a, as a distinct or officially used type of cultivar, but it is a one that's been around for a while, um, has some advantages, especially in a, a Roma profile, but uh, it's, it was combined, it was from a, a clone, it was combined from a Yabukita and another varietal to create this newest, more distinct cultivar. I should be rocking this back and forth a little bit. That looks good. Shake out those last few drops. Just like so. Okay. Um, you, the, the manufacturer, the maker, the creator, Machi, Machizuki Shoji is his name. This is a, 2000, a May 2012 harvest. And you can find all this information on the, tea, on the, the product page for this particular tea. I'm uh, going to go ahead now, before we get into the, the wet leaf and the liquor, although it's ready, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the dry leaf here. We get a good smell of it first. First off, you get, um, you get those spinachy notes. You might, uh, you may detect a very faint, light, citrusy, lemon peel type element blended, folded within the spinach there. If you breathe on it, put some heat you get more, a little bit of a lighter, lightly toasted, um, more gently uh, steamed or cooked rice, lightly cooked rice. Um, that is probably the closest to the, the, uh, the toasty aspect that you can pick up here. Scooping out a few of these leaves. These are the usual, uh, or the frequently found colors there. I mean, you have a, a rich emerald green look there. Uh, you've got needles here, some as long as uh, two inches, uh, the spindles, I could say. Of course, other, piece, other portions are smaller than that. Um, so overall, it's got a, a still a, got a glossy sheen to the, to the leaf portions there. Um, trying to recall. I want to say, and again, you want to check the product page to make sure this is correct, but I believe... This, yes, this is uh, on the package here. It, it tells as well. I forgot to write it down. This is Futsumushi. Futsumushi is uh, normal steamed as compared to Fukumushi, which you often see. Fukumushi 
deep steam. So it, deep steam may be more intense for shorter periods, where this one is a, was the more earlier uh, form of uh, duration and intensity of steaming used before Fukumushi became more popular. So something to, to look at there uh, as to how the steaming can bring out different characteristics. I, I'm tempted to go ahead and start pouring, but I should go ahead and, and look at these wet leaves a little bit first. A little bit more of the, the, the toasty aspect, moving more from that, like I said, uh, uh, ri cooked rice, crisp, almost kind of cooked, crisply cooked rice, fried rice maybe even, uh, towards a bit more of a toasty, toasted bread element now. Um, combine that again with the spinach. I'm getting less... Uh, maybe just a few, a little bit of lemon zest, a little bit of lemon peel type smell. And again, that's lighter, that's in the background, it's gentler. Um, I, I don't get as much of the marine uh, seaweed, fishy type elements that can come with some of the Japanese greens. This one has very little of that to comment on yet. Okay, so. I could, I guess, let me just pinch out a little bit, just kind of pull out a few of these leaves here. Uh, they've opened up. Again, you're, you're able to see here now that uh, you have leaf, leaf, the leaves that were nearly fully intact, you know, maybe three quarters of leaves, leaf there. And you've got other parts that are smaller than that, just uh, sections of leaves. You have little bits that look like to be middle vein of the leaf that... Uh, still connected to a side of, of, of leaf there, and you may have some kind of gentle, light, fine stem pieces there too. Let me tease one of those apart for just a moment. There we go. And let me set that to the side, or set that so they can be visible separate from the other leaf portions there. That looks good. So let me just kind of move that over for a moment be able to talk about this liquor and give it a swirl here. A nice bright yellow green color. You, it's got a bit of a cloudiness to it because of the, uh, the elements, the, f the, uh, the filament or the, the particles of leaf, not necessarily particles, but very fine fibers of the leaf floating in there, in the tea there. Uh, some sweetness there in between, say, it's in between um, that spinachy sweet over almost towards a uh, almost towards a boiled corn type of sweetness there. It's in that neighborhood. Again, very, very little of the uh, very little of the uh, marine type uh, seaweed fish type components present. Looks very bright, clear. Uh, in the cup here. Give it a taste now. Some unstringent tea present, but again, you, you Japanese teas are often known or and even expected. Uh, traditional Japanese teas are people look for some astringent tea. There's, there's, so there's a light astringent tea there. Now, I, of course, I, I steep this with a higher temperature than what should be, that is, than is traditionally used across nearly, nearly all uh, Japanese cinches. But having said that, there is still a, a strong um, uh, cooked spinach component there. So it's it, combined with a, a, a green sweetness, like a like a sweet pea type of sweetness there. Um, there is, uh, as this cools, let me give it another shot. Off the this, off this smell before you drink. And the aftertaste as well, as you swirl it in your mouth, through that process, you can also detect some some floral, uh, you know, like honeysuckle type sweetness, white flower honeysuckle type sweetness there. Um, so it's a sweetness. It's a bit of that floral component. Again, it's it's gentle. It's light. It's in the background. Um, 
the texture. Let's talk. I'm going to talk about the texture for a moment. Now, like I said, there is some stringency, but it folds. It, it's light enough, and it's just the right amount that it kind of folds with the, the texture of the tea. It gives this light, powdery sensation on the tongue. It combines with, in the aftertaste in the back here, a, uh, a thicker, almost lightly uh, juicy type feeling. So it, gives, it has a thickness there to it. In the background, in the back are the aftertaste as well. The, that sweet pea sweetness, that sweet pea taste, sweet pea sweetness. It's like you had just finished this crunching on a, a sugar snap pea maybe. There is that, that sweetness still there, as if you just finished eating that. So, um, off-camera tastings, I should note those as well. When I tasted these, uh, this off-camera, I gave it like, I gave it three steeps, for example. Uh, by the third steep, the, uh, the flavor, aroma, characteristics uh, dropped off significantly. The first two, quite nice, quite consistent, uh, consistent in duration and intensity. Uh, by the third, um, the the astringency really kind of carried everything and uh, m nearly masked the the majority of the other uh, components there. So, looking at, uh, but let me cage that by saying that happens with uh, many, if not all, sentients. They're not designed to do uh, three, four, five, six steepings. That kind of extended period in most cases. So when I, uh, looking at this tea, when I talk about other, and my, as I recall other cinches that I've experienced, and how this one fits in that, that, that range there, and how it should be as a cincha, this one does quite well. Um, I'd give this one a 92. It's got, like I said, clear uh, flavor aroma components there. It's got but what really kind of pushes it up a little bit more is that, that balance of astringency, that, uh, that mouth feel of a, of a thickness there, and the way those components really res, you know, reside in the aftertaste so that you are left in the finish with a thickness, a sweetness, and uh, some character as far as flavors there too. So come back to Walker Tea Review to find those teas that you know that, that may start off well, but you're maybe looking for those that really finish strongly too.